So if all is well and we do have everything configured correctly, what's going to happen is the branch router is going to be advertising the 150.02 and the 150.020 networks via RIP to ISP Router 4. ISP Router 4 is going to take those RIP routes learned via the VRF that it has to the branch router and it's going to take those RIP routes and it's going to redistribute those RIP routes into BGP, multi protocol BGP that we have run in the ISP Router 1. ISP Router 4 is then going to advertise the RIP routes learned via branch to ISP Router 1 via BGP. Since we have redistribution set up on the other side, ISP Router 1 is also going to redistribute the BGP learned routes into the local VRF that we have configured running to the headquarters router which is the VPN underscore X. So under the headquarters router, if I were to do a show IP route now, you can see that I am learning these RIP routes from the branch router. So we have successfully created the MPLS VPN and as you see, we can see those routes. But if we were to go on to, let's say, ISP Router 3, which is a P router in the MPLS VPN cloud, and if we just do a show IP route, you can see that it has no idea about the 150 networks. That's because by at the time that the traffic gets to ISP Router 3, it's basically just switching based on the labels for these routes that it's receiving. And it's basically doesn't see anything, any of these routes. Now we can verify connectivity if we just do a ping. Say we want to source the ping from headquarters. Uh, ping. We're going to do destination is going to be 150.0. Let's just say 2.1, which is the branch IP address, loopback IP address. I think that's loopback 1. I'm sorry, loopback 0 on the branch router. Now we want to do, let's just say, 10 times. Send commands yes, we want to source this from our loopback zero interface, which is 150.0.1.1. And as you see, we have connectivity. And so that's it in a nutshell. That is the basic MPLS VPN setup. <coughs>